This is lesson 8.3, permutations involving identical objects. In this lesson, the focus is on moving from different objects to what we have here with identical objects. Let's get started. It says, in the previous lesson, we looked at permutations involving objects that were different. So for instance, we had the word math. And if you recalled math, it has four different letters like so. So we would say that that is equal to 4 factorial. We know that 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we'd say that there's uh, 24 different uh, permutations that we could make with the letters M-A-T-H. Now, in this uh, section, what we're going to move to is, what happens if we had repeating letters? Like, let's say we had the word 7. All right, now if we have the word 7, obviously we have these E's right here. And if you can imagine, if I called this E1 and E2, if I switch those spots, we still have the same permutation, right? So what I want you to note right here is that we have clearly two E's, okay? So that's going to change the number of arrangements that we're going to have right here, okay? So let's just make a little bit of a note um, that comes off of this, and that would be the fact that 7, where this is E1 and this is E2 right here, um, and 7 when we change it around, and this is E2, and this is E1, are the same arrangements. Okay. So now, um, what I want you to think of is how many different ways we can you arrange them. Well, there's only two different ways you can arrange them. So from this information, we now know that there is two factorial uh, ways of arranging E1 and E2. So now, what can I say about the word 7? How many different arrangements I'm going to have? Well, I know that the number of arrangements is going to be equal to the number of letters that you had here, just like when we had math. So in this case, it's going to be 5 factorial. But then you do the number of, you divide it by the number of times that these letters are going to uh, repeat, right? And so we have 2 factorial right there. And I think you know that 5 factorial is the same thing as 120. And 2 factorial is just 1 times 2, of course, which gives you 60. Okay. And so you can try this with a different word if you wanted. Uh, if, so if we tried it with the word geese, for instance, notice that we obviously have three E's, right? So we would take the total number of letters, which would be 5 factorial. And this time, because we have three letters repeating rather than the two we had before, we would divide it by 3 factorial. 5 factorial, again, is 120. Uh, 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3, or 6, which would give you... 20 permutations, all right? And that's just what this little note right here says. It says, the number of permutations of n objects with r identical objects can be written like this, right? So the repeating part is the identical objects that they are talking about. So let's try a couple uh, examples, relatively quick lesson again. It says, there are seven boxes of cereal on a shelf. Uh, five of the boxes are me lucky charms, and one box is frosted flakes, and the other box is uh, tricks. Uh, how many ways can the boxes be uh, arranged? Well. Do we have any that are repeating? Of course, we have these ones right here. The boxes of me lucky charms are. So I'm going to take the seven boxes. So that is seven factorial. That's assuming that they were all different. And then we divide it by the number of repeating boxes that we'd have. Okay. Now, what I'd like to show you right here is that you could do this without using a calculator. Obviously, if you have a calculator, you simply just pound this in, seven factorial divided by five factorial. But think about what this is. This is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one all divided by five times four times three times 2 times 1. And if you note, these are the same. So those will cancel out. And so what are you left with? Well, we have 7 times 6, or 42 different permutations. Okay, let's go to the next example. Um, what we talk about right here, I guess, before we get into the example, is that sometimes what we're going to have is we're going to have um, multiple identical objects. All right. So uh, as an example, let's take a word that maybe does have, um, maybe we'll just do it right up here. A word that has uh, two different letters that uh, repeat. Let's take the word um, Okanagan. So notice this word has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. So if we have eight letters, then we write that as eight factorial. And then because we have a couple different letters that repeat, we have the letters A repeats. And because we have the letters um, N that repeat like so, that is how you go and calculate for this circumstance. Okay. Uh, for example number two right here, it says we have Everett, and he's going to walk eight blocks from his home to the baseball park. He always walks four blocks east and four blocks south. How many ways can Everett walk to the baseball park? So this is what it really looks like if I was to draw ourselves a picture. We'd have something like this. This would be Everett. This would be the baseball park. Okay. 
So if ever it wants to get from here to here, obviously if you were going to do this just by hand, it would be quite painful. We'd have to navigate. That would be one way. This would be two ways. This would be three ways. And it's also tough to kind of keep that sorted. All right. So assuming this is symmetrical like we have right here, this actually makes um, for a fairly easy question. All we do is we take the number of different blocks. So the number of blocks that we have is no matter how he wants to get from E to P, he's going to have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 steps. So I'm going to start with writing this as 8 factorial. Now, are there going to be any directions that he's going to have to repeat? Well, because he's only going to the right and down right there, no matter what combination he does, whether he goes straight down like this, or if he goes all the way across like so, he must go down four, so four of these, and he must do four to the right of these. So I'm gonna write this as four factorial uh, times four factorial. And so the question I have for you right now is, um, is eight factorial divided by four factorial, four factorial the same thing as going eight factorial divided by 16 factorial? Would that give me perhaps one half? I think you'll see that it doesn't. All right, so let's write down what eight factorial would be. That'd be eight times seven times six times five times four times three times 2 times 1. And if we divide it by 4 factorial, that would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And again, of course you could use a calculator to um, give you the results uh, right away here, but I kind of wanted you to see what's actually happening, why we get the answer that we do. Well, notice that these would obviously cancel with these ones, like so. Okay. Well, let's think about uh, any of the others that might cancel. Well, what's 4 times 2? 4 times 2 is 8. Okay. And 3 times 1. Well, 3 times 1 is 3. For instance, you could go 6 divided by 3 would give you then a 2 up here. Okay, So I could say then that the answer to this, 8 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 4 factorial, is 7 times that 6 changed to be a 2 times 5, which is 70. Okay, So that was example 2. Um, taking a look at how we could do something where we had uh, kind of a grid like that. We're going to expand on this in, in some of the lessons to come where it gets uh, perhaps a little bit more complicated. Okay, last thing that I have for you is, um, is really just this note right here that says um, no matter how many of these repeating events that we have, we just put the repeating events down here in the denominator. Okay, So um, we have a good example of that right here with this uh, kebab question. So it says uh, we have a kebab recipe. It requires two mushrooms, two shrimp, two cherry tomatoes, and two zucchini slices. So if you can imagine, we're going to put those in some kind of different order. So how many different types of, um, I guess you'd say, or how many different items are we putting on our kebab? We would have eight factorial. Um, and then how many repeating ones do we have? Well, the mushrooms are repeating, so we have two factorial. Shrimp is repeating, two factorial. Cherry, same thing. And finally, the zucchini slices are the same thing. Now, what is this equal to? Well, eight factorial, we know, we can write like this. Again, you could use your calculator. That's fine by me. Um, although maybe on the test, I might take it away. Uh, and then two factorial, I would just write that's two times one. And I know this is kind of overkill writing this out, but I just wanted you to see what this is equivalent to being. Like so. Okay, now, is there things that you can go and get rid of? Well, I know that 2 times 1, and then 2 times 1, and 2 times 1, that all is going to give me 8. All right? And this 2 times 1 is going to get rid of this guy right here. So what am I left with? I'm left with 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3, and then technically I suppose times the 1 because we got rid of that 2. Okay? What does that end up giving us? 2,520 different permutations, different ways that we could arrange those items on the skewer. Okay, so that uh, is all this lesson is. Uh, we were just taking a look at how you could um, go and arrange uh, items depending on if you have uh, items that are repeating um, or if, like in this last example, you have multiple um, different items that are repeating. Okay, so that concludes this lesson. Thank you very much.